first and foremost. First and foremost, I thank the Lord for giving me this opportunity to share my faith journey with you all. In every age, there have been men and women who, obedient to the Father's call and the promptings of the Holy Spirit, have chosen this special way of following Christ in order to devote themselves to him with an undivided heart. Like the apostles, religious too have left behind everything in order to be with the Lord and to put themselves as he did at the service of God and their brothers and sisters. In this way, through the many charisms of spiritual and apostolic life bestowed on them by the Holy Spirit, they have helped to make the mystery and the mission of the church shine forth. And in do doing so, have contributed for the renewal of society. We read in the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. For consider your call, brethren, not many of you are wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. <clears throat> but God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise and chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. Religious call is not that which is achieved by one's effort or bought with the human power or the resources at one's disposal. It is merely a gratuitous gift that God offers to us along with freedom, either to respond to him positively or to reject him. Even to pos respond positively, one needs the grace of God and a disposition like that of an empty vessel awaiting to be filled in. The disposition to respond is created through our communication with the Lord through prayer. As young children and even as teenagers, we are unable to cultivate the habit of prayers without and a, and a deep relationship with the Lord without the help and support of the family. The gift of faith that we receive at our baptism is nurtured by the faith of our parents and grandparents. Prayer is the essence for the seed of occasions to germinate and flourish in the families. Prayers of parents and grandparents help the children to grow in an atmosphere of spiritual values such as love, peace, joy, togetherness, caring, sharing, communion, compassion, and service. If I look back to my childhood, I was born in a family where my parents, grandparents, and all my relatives practiced the faith. God was the center of our family life. God was invoked and his blessings were sought before and after every activity. Praying the rosary together as a family united our family. Going to church on, for mass was the important event of weekend. Getting involved in the church activity assisting the priest and the religious in any way possible gave us the greatest pleasure and pride. Every little activity done at the parish church enabled us to spend our holidays in close association with the church. In the family, the priests and the religious was spoken of as heroes and role models 
which inspired me to focus on a life of dedication and commitment as a religious. Having seen many of the young girls who joined the religious life, when they visited the parish church, I was impressed by their way of life, their kindness, their pleasing attitudes, and the sharing of their experiences as religious sisters. And it motivated me to give my life in service to the Lord by working for the children and young people. The desire to be a religious was with me, within me from the tender age of 10. And I always prayed that I may be pleasing to God so that he may choose me to follow him. And the desire was fulfilled when a couple of sisters came to my parish church for the vocation promotion and they spoke to me personally and where I revealed to them my desire to be a religious. Thereafter, with the guidance of the parish priest and the support of my parents, I was able to take a bold step to respond to his call and joined an active congregation, Sisters of St. Anne of Providence at the age of 20. The first phase of my formation, that is postulancy program, started on 7th June 1981. As I joined a couple of months later, they arranged a special prayer service for me to join the group on 8th September on the feast of Our Lady's birthday in 1981. In the evening, as the service began with the sign of the cross, there was a park cut and darkness all over. The postulant's mistress quickly said that although there was darkness, Christ is the light, still shines on us and he dispels the darkness. This thought dominated my mind and heart throughout my formation. After the completion of my formation, on the day of my first profession, once again there was a power cut and this time it was for a longer time. The electricity failed and we had to delay the Eucharistic celebration. Even after waiting for an hour, there was no sign of power being restored. Again, without the electricity, the mass began. Now the time came for us to go to the altar one by one to pronounce our vows. Before me, there were four sisters who pronounced their vows. I was the fifth one. And as I went up to the altar and just began the formula of consecration, the electricity was restored and there was light. This experience gave me a great conviction that Jesus is my light. As in St. John chapter 1 verses 4 to 5, in him was life and the life was the light of man. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. No matter how dark and difficult the path that I am asked to tread following Jesus in the religious life, Christ is my light who brightens up my path. Without his light, even the brightest of lights will reveal nothing to me. He is my guiding light and in him there is no darkness at all. In the most difficult and challenging time, he is there to shed his light, to show me the way and brighten up my path. St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8, 28, says, We know that in everything God works for good with those who love him, 
who are called according to his purpose. Certainly and most certainly, it is my conviction that nothing is going to happen to me without the knowledge of God. And if something does happen, it will be with his knowledge and it is for my good because he loves me and he has chosen me to love him. We read in Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. The Lord who called me to follow him in the religious life is always with me. He accompanies me. He empowers me to continue the journey of my religious life with him. When he lays a burden on me, certainly he keeps his hand beneath it. Now religious life is centered around community life. Community living is an art wherein we learn to live amicably, a disciplined life with the sisters of different age group, background, temperaments, and abilities. We do have a timetable to enable us to live, pray, work uh, together, and thus build up a community. We always begin our day with community prayer, Lord's followed by time of meditation. The celebration of Eucharist is the focal point of the day where we receive the Lord in Eucharist who sustains and strengthens us to accept each other with love, forgiveness and sisterly affection. Sharing of meals together and the lighter moments spent in recreation strengthen the bond of our community life. The celebrations of feast days and also the special events of the congregation fill us with joy. Monthly recollections, Lectio Divina, and practice of other devotions enable us to have a deeper relationship with the Lord. In our work, we give ourselves with love and dedication, helping and supporting each other as a family. The joys and sorrows of an individual sister affect the whole community, just as it does in a family. Despite the faith and conviction, at times, the religious life can pose many challenges. The changes taking place in society and the decrease in the number of occasions are weighing heavily on the consecrated life in today's world. The apostolic works of many institutes and their very presence in the certain local churches are endangered. As has already occurred at other times in history, there are institutes which even run the risk of disappearing completely. We are not insulated from the temptations and dangers to our faith and calling. Sometimes the vows are put to the test in today's world, which is technologically and economically advanced. When we find people who do not value the spiritual things but are engrossed in mundane things, we become nervous. When our service and efforts do not yield fruit, when we do not receive the response from our listeners as we would wish to receive, we get discouraged. We feel demoralized when we see the present generation who do not care for spiritual things at all. There comes a question, 
Have we failed in living our commitment? If so, in what way? And how can we revive it? The challenges before us to keep up the gift of faith and to pass it on to the next generation is very grave. To edify the present generation and create in them a longing for the spiritual things and to attract them to a way of life of dedication and commitment in religious life is indeed a Herculean task. Despite all the challenges, dangers and disappointments, the Lord has been good to me. And I praise him for his faithfulness to me for the past 40 years of my religious life. It gives me joy to belong to the Lord who has chosen, chosen me to follow him more closely. It gives me joy to render thanks to him for this unmerited gift of my vocation. As a call within the call, he has also chosen me to serve in a distant land, away from my homeland and my people. Here, I have so many people who accept me as their own just because I come to them in the name of the Lord. I belong to the Lord and set apart to bear witness to his love and service. It is my prayer that the Lord may inspire many more young people to respond to his call positively and to dedicate themselves to serve him in the religious life. I thank you. Good evening, one and all. A warm welcome to the world of my story. All of us have a story to share. A story is an experience. Each experience is a memory that which cherishes and nourish. Religious vocation is one such love story of a consecrated person. I am set apart to love and live for God and his church. Today, I would like to share my life and faith journey as a sister of St. Joseph of Tarbes. I am Sister Shanti. When I was in year nine, we had given a project in religious class on religious occasion, but I had never had an idea about this project. So I went to the parish priest and asked him to guide me and give me some materials. And he did give me a load of magazines. So I looked in through the magazines and I found a picture of a sister praying in front of the crucifix. So I cut it and made a poster out of it and gave a title saying a sister praying before the crucifix. After making a project, I brought it to the class and presented it to the teacher. And teacher told us, whatever project you have done, just place it on the desk and just look at the project that you have done it. So I was gazing at the cross, the crucifix and the sister praying. Something touched within me. So I had a deep desire. Why not? I also give my life to the, as a religious. So I kept on praying, pondering. When I completed year 10, nurtured my desire to consecrate myself to God in religious life after a dramatic scene, which I visualized in my mysterious dream. I saw this same image of crucifixion and a sister praying. I was so excited and confirmed my call. So I joined this congregation of sisters of 
St. Joseph of Tufts. After a long years of my formation, on 1st May 2003, I was overwhelmed with the experience of belonging to my Lord fully. I, I was aware that the Lord is calling me to experience his unconditional love, to be his radical disciple, to live the gift of my consecration through the charism of communion. The joy of being set apart for God alone helped me to discover my new identity. My journey has been fulfilling, demanding, challenging, and joyful. God drew me through his unconditional love. He created a deep desire in me to follow him. He made me to recognize his calling to follow him day after day. He made it clear and also gave me grace to follow. Of course, I kept asking God to help me on my journey. He is truly amazing and faithful. I say this because of the joy he fills me with, the, with every day. I am chosen by God to love him and serve him. And his assurance of God's promise in prophet Isaiah for chapter 43, verse 1. I have called you by name, you are mine, and it is fulfilled. To describe Thank you, our sister. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we really need to have time for the other uh, sisters to speak as well. So, 